So imagine you've planned this awesome backpacking trip with your friends. You hit the trail really early and get that awesome camp spot you've been hoping for. You get there before anybody else and you unpack all of your gear, you set up camp, all the chores are done, so you've filtered all the water, you've gathered this huge pile of firewood, and you all decide to go just explore the area a little, less than a mile away from the camp. About an hour or two hours later, you come back and find a group of over 30 middle schoolers and their chaperones have set up like you can't see your tents in the sea of other tents that have been set up. And one of the adult leaders makes it very clear they are not moving. What do you do? So that was our weekend. Absolute chaos. This has never happened to us before. And I understand that, you know, it's open to the public, but in that situation, it's also first come, first serve on the camp spots. And we were kind of there first. Uh, usually the protocol is you ask, and we definitely were not asked or consulted before this went down. We were pretty upset to say the least, and to add insult to injury, a um, bunch of the kids were like stepping on our gear and like, kicking it when they walked by and making weird comments like, man, I feel bad for whoever has to sleep next to my tent because I'm gonna be making this annoying noise all night. And um, one of the adults got pretty confrontational. You can't really blame the kids. They were just kind of doing what their adults were telling them to do, but it was a pretty frustrating situation. And we kind of knew if we stuck around, some actual confrontation might happen at some point in the evening, so we decided it was best to look for another spot. Now, one of the leaders did pull Jordan aside and was pretty apologetic about it, but also like, look, this is just the way it is. When this went down, um, it just didn't seem appropriate to take any more footage of the trip. The most important thing was finding a new place to camp and kind of de-escalating the chaotic situation that was happening. So no footage of that. There is uh, some clips from when we were exploring the cave before all of the uh, relocating stuff happened um, and just one or two clips from afterwards. But yeah, so this is a, a story after the fact rather than, you know, the actual events recorded. That just didn't seem appropriate. But Romans 8:28. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those who are called according to his purposes. So this was one of those seemingly bad situations that actually worked out for good. So we went a little bit further down the trail to the next spot and there were these three guys there and we kind of just explained our situation and what had happened and said, well, you know, can we camp with you guys? There's only four of us. And see, we asked um, and they said, yeah, absolutely. You know, bring your stuff. Do you need help? And uh, we said, no, we've got it. And we picked up the whole tent with like all of our stuff in it, uh, the sleeping pads, sleeping bags, all of that, and just carried it down the trail and plopped it in a new spot at the other campsite. After we had gotten ourselves resettled in the new spot, we got a sign that relocating was the right decision to make. So this guy came down the trail from the opposite direction and asked if we had seen that group pass through. And we said, yeah, actually they're camping up there. And he said, okay, because I was camping at this other site last night and they all just flooded in and, you know, set their stuff up everywhere. And I got like no sleep, they were really loud and wild, and the adults weren't much better behaved than the kids. And then he turned around and doubled back the miles he had just come from to separate himself from that group. Um, which, yeah, was a pretty clear sign that if this guy is willing to, you know, trek back however many miles to the next next spot just to avoid camping with them again, then it must be rough. Oh, and at one point when they went off to go refill their water, 
we decided we should come up with some goofy trail names. Um, now, Jordan insists that you cannot change your trail name, but I've heard of plenty of people who have changed their trail name. And I think our trail names were kind of um, us being really frustrated about the situation and maybe taking it out on each other by coming up with like humiliating names for each other. My name was Wide Load. Flashback to when Jordan and I did the shakedown at Grandfather Mountain. Um, I'm a kind of smaller person, so my pack always looks enormous on me. And we were coming down off the mountain and this dad with his kids saw the giant pack and went, whoa, what is that huge thing? Get off the trail, wide load. And then as he kept walking with his kids, he was like laughing and repeating his dad joke, like, haha, I said wide load you know, until he was like out of earshot. So going off that story, Jordan was like, you're wide load. And um, Brooke's name became Hairy Legs because she didn't shave her legs before the trip. Uh, Jordan's name is Ducky because uh, he farts a lot on the trail and it sounds like a baby duck. And Brooke's boyfriend, they gave him a name that I'm not gonna repeat because we're trying to keep this channel family friendly. But yeah, so when they came back, we gave them our trail names in addition to real names. And they actually all had trail names, which, except for one of them, uh, he was just his regular name. It was a definite roller coaster for, you know, parts of it there, but I wouldn't do it any different. And I guess the moral of the story is Sometimes it takes an attack from the Boy Scouts to understand the true power of friendship. Sort of a disclaimer, we weren't actually dealing with Boy Scouts. That's just what we kept calling them for lack of a better word. Uh, think of it as a trail name we came up with for the group. Also, if you happen to be somebody who was involved in that Boy Scout group watching. I'd like to give you the most sincere thank you because if all that hadn't happened, we wouldn't have made incredible friends uh, and had such a great time on our trip. There will be a video with the link in the description to just the cave exploring part of this trip if you want to check that out. Uh, for more videos like this, you can go to my website, seagrasstosasafras.com. Go ahead and subscribe to the email list and I send out a monthly newsletter just with what's new as far as videos, posts, whatever projects are coming up. You can support my channel on YouTube and Odyssey, but I would much rather you support it on Odyssey because it's a free speech alternative to YouTube. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.